I'm Karen Manus, Director of Children's Ministries at Sunrise United Methodist Church. Welcome to Storytime and Crafter Noon. This week we're going to be reading Where is Wisdom? A Treasure Hunt Through God's Wondrous World, inspired by Job 28. Written by Scott James and illustrated by Hein Zyman. Look at this world the Lord has made. Beauty is all around. God filled the world with wonders and sent us on a treasure hunt. Some treasures are easy to find. Others are buried away, hidden for those who seek. But hidden things can be found if we know where to look. The world is full of people who love to discover, to push back the darkness and find new things. They search far and wide to uncover treasure of every kind. And how good they are at finding it. Farmers work the dark soil and gather a prize of golden wheat. Miners dig deep to find troves of silver and gold. There's treasure everywhere. Burrowing beneath the mountains, explorers seek every precious thing. Copper, iron, sapphires, and sparkling gems in every color. What priceless prizes the Lord has given. In fields above, the beasts pass by without knowing what riches lie below. The lion prowls the earth, and the hawk circles the sky, unaware of treasures buried deep. So much remains hidden to them. The treasures of earth have been given to mankind, not to make us rich, but to show us how generous the giver can be. As good as these gifts are, God tells us to seek an even greater treasure, Wisdom. But where is wisdom found? Where can we dig up understanding? Treasure hunters have searched high and low, but they do not know the way. They call down into deep caverns. Wisdom, are you there? The deep of the earth booms back. It's not down here. They call to the bottom of the sea. Wisdom, are you there? Bubbling up from the ocean floor comes the reply. It's not in me. Some men try to buy wisdom with silver and gold, but it is far more valuable than that. Its price is greater than diamonds and pearls. Nothing compares to the worth of true wisdom. Where, then, is wisdom found? We hear whispers of it, but no one seems to know where it is. Don't worry. Wisdom is hidden, but it is not lost. God alone knows the way. He knows exactly where wisdom is found. How can God know? God made all things and set them in their place. He knows right where each treasure is found. He sees everything under heaven and has never lost a thing. And do you know what is even more amazing? God doesn't just see all things. He rules all things. To the wind, he says, blow that way, and the wind obeys. To the sea, he says, that's far enough, and the water laps right up to the shore. The rain falls where he sends it, and he charges the lightning bolt to light up the sky. If God can do all that, then he must be very wise. He can tell us where wisdom is found. He created the map that leads the treasure hunter to the prize. So what does God tell us? He looks down at us. 
his very own treasure and says, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. The fear of the Lord, to know God truly, to be amazed by his greatness, to want nothing more than to love and live for him. That is where wisdom is found. And now that we know of this generous giver and the wisdom he provides, are we ready to see where this treasure hunt leads? After searching high and low through God's wondrous world, we'll never find a greater treasure than Jesus Christ. Wisdom points to him. One thing I loved in that story is it talked about adventure and looking for wisdom and looking for treasure. So that made me think about it would be a fun idea for us to make our very own compass. And you could pretend that you're on a great treasure hunt. And of course, we know that the greatest treasure of all is our relationship with God. And he is the source of true treasure, which is wisdom and understanding. So here we have our compass here, and this is what you have. A, you have a smaller bag within your worship kit. It should have all these things in it. So the first thing you're going to do to make a compass that looks a bit like this is you're going to take your cord and you're going to follow the order with your beads of putting the beads on the end of one of your cords. So you're going to start with a blue, go to green, go to yellow, into green we're creating a bit of a pattern here and then back to blue so you should have something that looks like this and then we're just going to take the end of our cord and to tie it to keep those beads in place and that way when the beads fall down they won't fall off of your cord and you're going to do the same thing following the same order on the other side of your cord so blue, then green, then yellow, then green, and blue again. All right, so now we're gonna do another tie on the other end of our cord. So at this point, we should have something that looks a bit like this. Now we're gonna hold our cord so that we're holding it in half, and then just maybe a couple inches or so from the end of those beads, we're going to tie a knot through the entire cord. So we've looped it in half, and now we're tying a knot. So now we have one really long loop with these ends with the beads on it. And what we're going to do is you'll notice there's a little hole here on the piece that holds your compass. So you're gonna just pull it through that hole so that this actually goes onto the back and then you're gonna pull it through so that it comes through on the front side. So you have something that looks a bit like this. And then we're gonna take this cord here and tie a knot and try to get that knot to kind of slide it down so that it's as close to that hole as you can get it. So it looks something like this. And then with your leftover beads, you're gonna follow the same pattern that we followed on each side of the bottom. And we're gonna start with just sliding it over the entire cord. So if you fold it in half, you should be able to thread your beads through. You're gonna start with blue, go to green, go to yellow, back to green, and another blue. And once you have that, we're gonna tie a knot so that it's pretty close to the top of where those beads start. So now we have created our very own compass. And you'll notice that the north is at the top. And this helps remind us that God and our relationship with God is always the ultimate treasure that we should be searching for in our lives. The next thing that you're going to notice is a piece of paper that looks something like this in your bag. 
and I'm going to show you what we're going to use this paper for. So we are making a little treasure chest, if you will, and here's what it's going to ultimately end up looking something like. And a treasure chest wouldn't be a treasure chest without a treasure inside of it. So I'm going to show you what we have inside of it. And I loved how the story talked about searching for gems and mining the earth to find all the treasures that God has placed there for us. And if you've ever gone gem mining before, it's just so much fun. And so here we have our gems here. And one thing we're going to be studying today and on Sunday morning as well are the Ten Commandments. And these are really special rules that God has given us. And God has promised, we know that he promised to bless Abraham as the father of nations. And later on in the Bible, we have him giving these nations these 10 rules to live by. So God has created a promise, and we are to keep our promise to God by following these rules. And of course, these rules aren't to keep us from enjoying anything or keep us away from anything. It's to actually protect us and help us live the kind of life that God wants us to live and to keep anything from taking us farther away from God. And so we have these gems here, and you have these in your packet as well. And I've gone ahead and taken a moment and written on the backs of these all of the Ten Commandments. So you can just pause the video if you'd like and take a moment, use your pencil, and write down all of those commandments on the back. Because we know that our relationship with God, finding wisdom and finding that closeness with God, following the Ten Commandments, all of those things are much more valuable than any beautiful gem that we could possibly find. And when you get done building your treasure box, you're going to take these gems and you can put them inside your treasure box, just like this, and then take them out from time to time and you can remember what those Ten Commandments are so that you can live the kind of life that God wants you to live. Now, I've gone ahead, you don't have to do this extra step if you don't want to, but I think it's rather fun if you can make your treasure chest look like it has a surface to it that looks a bit like maybe wood, what you would think a treasure chest might be made out of. So I'm gonna do just a quick little demonstration to show you how to make that. And I prefer to do it on the, the blank side so that you're actually folding in when we get to that in just a minute. We'll be folding in on these lines here. But I'll show you kind of how to do this. So what you're going to do is just take your pencil and just lightly kind of drag it back and forth and kind of swirl it a little bit. And sometimes press down a little bit more, sometimes press down a little bit lighter because we know that wood grain doesn't grow completely evenly. And sometimes it has little knots in it and sometimes do a few little swirls and those types of patterns that you can see in wood grains. And I like every so often to maybe draw a few lines like this so it actually makes it look like there's planks of wood that are being used in your wood chest. And you could do that all over if you wanted to, and I just think that's a really fun thing to do, to um, just make your treasure chest look like it's made out of wood. Once you've completed that part, what you're going to do on the other side is you're going to fold this along all of these dotted lines. I'm going to take the time to fold all of those. Once you have it all folded, you're going to have something that looks, well, a bit like this. and what I notice is that once you folded the paper one way, it folds the other way really easily. So if you put a wood grain on this side, you're probably going to want to fold it inward so that the dotted lines are on the inside of your box instead of the outside of your box. The next thing you're going to notice in your kit are these four sticky dots, which you know that I like to use. And so you'll notice that there are these three tabs here, and there's another little tab right here. We're going to start with these little tabs right here. 
And you're gonna press that sticky dot down, kind of hold it as you pull the plastic back. There we go. And you're gonna take it and fold up that side so that you've created two sides of your box. You're gonna do the same thing, get another sticky dot. Put it on your next tab and pull back the plastic. There you go. And then press it onto the next wall of your box. And then we have another one right here, another tab. So you should have four sticky dots. This is our third sticky dot. And we're gonna pull that back. There we go. And then put that in there. Press down. So we've created all the sides of our box here. And I wouldn't put any more sticky dots down because you want to be able to open and close this um this extra little flap here. So this is the lid of your box. And then of course you can put all of those gems with the Ten Commandments written on them and you have your very own treasure chest. So we're gonna make an active origami that should look a little bit like this. Here's one that I've already completed here. And this is gonna give you lots of ideas of ways that you can show others your relationship with Jesus Christ. And you'll notice there are lots of different suggestions on here of kind things you can do so you can share your love of God with others. And I'm gonna show you how to make your active origami. So you have a piece of paper and it's already been folded so that it looks like a triangle. And you're gonna unfold it so that it looks like a square again. And you're gonna turn it so that it is the printed side down. And you're gonna fold all of these corners into a center point here. So you're essentially making a smaller square out of your large square so that it looks like that. And then we're gonna flip this over. And then we're going to, again, make a smaller square. So we're gonna turn these side, these corners in to the center point here. We're gonna do that all the way around so we've made a smaller square. I'm gonna make those creases really strong. You can also use your pencil if you need to, to kind of rub those along to make the, the creases really strong, neat creases. So now you've made an even smaller square. And what you're gonna do is you're going to fold the square in half one way and unfold it. And then fold the square again in half the other way, pressing down, you're just making some more creases. And then what you have, you have to kind of put your fingers in these bottom flaps is you have your active origami. And so once you put your fingers in the flap, you can actually use a hand to manipulate this. And I was thinking it would be a fun way if you had a pair of dice, you could roll the dice and see what number you landed on, roll the dice again and find another number, and then pull it out and see what you should do that day to show that wisdom and love of God to someone else that day. So I think this is just a fun way, a fun little game to play to give you different ideas of things that you can do to help others. The last thing you're going to notice is this worksheet that you can complete. And this reminds us of how that God keeps his promises. He's made promises to Noah, to Moses, and to Abraham. He's making promises all throughout the Bible. And one of those things that he wants us to do to be able to receive his full glory is to live with those Ten Commandments that we learned about. So here's just another Bible verse to remind us that God keeps his promises. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's story time and craft afternoon just as much as I did. And I can't wait to see you again next week.